main reasons I started coming to Pops was because the first time I came, I noticed that half of the people here were in my classes. So I just I wanted to come to support Mr. Danziger because he invited me. And I thought it was a great idea, the whole idea about Pops. And uh, then when I noticed that I had a lot of my students, I thought, I'm going to make this part of my regular schedule, come to Pops. And um, about this time, my son started getting in a lot of trouble. So he was, uh, he's very independently minded, and he likes to learn things his way. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, he started delving into some areas that are not acceptable legally and uh, got himself in a fair amount of trouble and ended up on probation. And that was like really a tough time in our life. You know, just like the time constraints, all the time spent dealing with probation officers and, uh, you know, going to court and stuff like that. So I realized what it was like being part of the criminal justice system. You know, I felt that firsthand with my son being involved in it. and. Um, it got pretty scary as, he, as things went on. It wasn't like he was getting better as time went on. He was getting in more and more trouble. So it really looked like he was going to end up spending some time behind bars. And he ended up for a, a week in Juvie Hall. And, uh, and that was really horrible. <laughs> that was a horrible time. Just having to go to Los Padrinos and, you know, I wore my sandals one day and they wouldn't let me in. You know, I had, <laughs> I had to, they, they got me some shoes that they had in, in the back and you just, it's a very, I don't know, it's inhuman in a way, being in those sort of lockup situations and so I got a little taste of that in, in my own life and uh, so, you know, uh, I guess I could kind of relate to what people were going through with their family members being behind bars and having to go visit and, and that sort of thing. You know, and my son's doing a lot better now. He, I, all that stuff kind of worked towards teaching him, you know. So he did get the point, and he's actually turned his life around a, a lot now. But, uh, but I'm still part of Pops, and I'll be here as long as I'm here. So, and uh, Can I ask you a sure. Um, what's it like when you're coming here to school every day and teaching? When you're dealing with your son who's in trouble, what you and your wife are going through that we don't see because you're like one of the coolest teachers on the planet, and everyone knows, right? Everyone knows that, and no one would know that anything's going on. But what's like internally for a parent who can deal with that? Well, you know, life has to go on, right? I mean, you have to. You can't just stop your job because someone's having a problem in your family. At least not. You know, it's an inconvenience. It's very inconvenient. Um, you know, having to take time off to go to court. But, you know, that, but that thing is in the back of your mind. Like, what's my son doing right now? He's probably off doing something crazy. Or he just did something crazy, and yeah, you got to deal with that while you're trying to help people, you know, learn. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was hard to, to do them both, honestly. It was really hard. You know, but it made me, I, I think it gave me a, a feeling for just, uh, how difficult it is once you get, once you start in that system, it's very difficult. They make it very difficult for you. And for a young person to be involved in that, you know, it's, it's a hard thing. Um, and a parent, too. So um, I was going to give you a little drawing lesson today. I was going to show you how to draw a skull since we're coming up on Halloween. So we're going to use some cheap paper here and let's go small, okay? So when you get your piece of paper, fold it into, a, into four. All right, so I got my little model here. Okay, so there's a couple different ways to draw things. You know, you can use just lines. But I find that you end up with a stronger image when you add the shadows, the shading too, right? When you think about the whole surface of the thing, not just the outline. So we're going to do an outline, a basic outline, and then we're going to add a little shading to it. So um, do you guys want to draw along with me? Or maybe let me just draw one real quick, and then we'll go through it step by step. How about that? 
Okay, I'll explain what we're going to do. All right, so think about, think about forms. The main skull's kind of like a melon sort of form, right? Like a, a ball, but then it's got this, this jaw sticking out below, right? So that's the main form, right? It's this round form. And then it's got this cylinder kind of right here, right? So think about that first. It's going to be a round form. And then it's got the, it's got the cylinder of the teeth, the upper jaw hanging down like that. And if you notice, the cheekbones kind of stick out, right? Can you guys see that? Like this, this bone right here? It sticks out and it goes back a little bit and the jaw hooks in right here. So that's kind of a secondary form on the skull. Kind of goes like that. And then you're going to have your eye sockets and your nose socket, your teeth. And then the jaw comes down from there. And you got bottom teeth. OK, so those are just the outlines, right? So what if we shade this a little bit? Let's put a little shade on one side. If we shade one side, like we're saying the light's coming from one side, the insides of the sockets are going to be darker too. I'm going to have a hard time making this look right up here with these pens because it erases as I <laughs> draw over top of it. So maybe I should just draw one on paper for you guys too. OK, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to draw the main form. We'll shade one side of it. We'll shade the secondary forms, OK? And this, this example is not that good, so I'm going to get rid of it. We'll do it again on paper. OK, so the first thing you want to do when you get your paper is fold it in four. Little, little squares, okay? Okay, so I'm going to show you on this piece of paper because it doesn't erase as I go. Okay, so think about the main form, which is a ball, right? Okay, so do it really lightly. You guys see how I'm holding my pencil? I'm not holding it like I'm writing because that makes a real dark mark when you do that, right? You want to hold it kind of a sketchy way. I'll hold it back a little bit so you can get a sketchy line. Okay, so I've got the jaw right there, the main part of the head and the jaw. Two kind of lumps coming out the bottom for the cheekbones, and then the eyes are going to be going to be about there. And the nose is going to be the nose hole is kind of high because your nose bone ends right about here, and that's like when everything's all gone. That's a big hole right there. Okay, and then your lower jaw comes down and over a bit, but it's narrower than the ball itself. Okay. So, so you could start out by sketching it really lightly like this. Did I go too fast? <laughs> I could do it again. Okay, and I'm going big so you guys can see it, but, but you can draw on your small section, okay? You don't have to draw a big one because we're going to shade it. It takes a little more time to shade. Okay, so. Start out with just a ball for the, for the uh, cranial cavity. And then kind of not too big. You don't want it to be out too far out on the edge there, but we're drawing the, the upper jaw, this part, because it's all one bone, the, the cranium and the jaw. This is all part of one bone. Okay, and, and the lower jaw kind of hangs down below there like so. Okay, so the teeth, these, this is where the teeth are going to be. Should I do my lines darker for you guys to see? Can you guys? Okay. All right, so. Okay, so we got the maxilla. Okay, and then this goes up and over here. This is, this is your cheekbone, right? Your zygomatic bone. So this kind of goes over a little bit. And we're doing this kind of 
we're not doing this exactly realistically. We're just doing this in a way so that you can understand the forms and the shading of the skull. Okay, and then above the cheekbones, that's where the hole is for the eyes. Okay, so there's a socket here. So the holes for the eyes are going to be right about in there. And the nose is going to be kind of high up in between there. Not all the way up in there, but, but kind of high up. You can see the inside of the jawbone there. Can I can go over my lines to make it nice. Okay, so let's, let's pick an opposite like direction. We're coming from the right, okay? And I'm going to put my shading on mostly on this side of the forms, right? That's going to be the dark part's going to be away from the, where the light's coming from. So I'm going to start putting in my, my shading. I'm holding my pencil sideways so I can shade with it. This kind of sticks out right here, so this is all going to be darker. This, this side of the upper jaw is going to be darker. Everything on, if the light's coming from this side, everything on this side pretty much is going to be darker. All right, and then the eye sockets are kind of the opposite, right? Instead of a round form going out this way, they're a round form going in. Okay, so the opposite side, this side is going to be darker in my socket. Because it's the, the light's coming this way and the form is blocking it there, so. And then this is going to be this is pretty much a hole into the head there. So that's going to be darker. The whole thing's going to be darker. Okay, so then let's think about the teeth. All right, the teeth are individual little forms and each one of them has a shadow on it, okay? Or each one of them is there's going to be a lighter side and a darker side. They're not flat. Okay, so to make the teeth, don't put a line around them. Just put a little shadow where the side of the teeth is going to be to define the teeth. And then you're only really seeing the front teeth straight on. You, the, the molars you're seeing from the side. So you're not, you, don't have to, you don't have to show the molars because they're going back behind. So you really just see a couple lines for the molars. Okay, so this whole side of the face is going to be darker. Inside this hole is going to be darker. This side of the eye sockets is going to be darker. There's, it goes down a little bit here at the bridge of the nose. So think about, think about how the light is hitting it and that's how, that's how you will be able to draw these different forms with the shading. Looks kind of like a baboon skull. <laughs> to draw the teeth, I usually just draw the upper line where the gums meet the bone and I try to avoid making too much line on the teeth because they're white, right? They are shaded on one side, but that's more how you'd see the teeth. And if you're seeing the bone, all the gums are gone, so you see the, you see the tooth is long, it goes up into the bone like that.
And the upper teeth kind of shade the lower teeth a little bit too, because they hang over. So that's going to be a little darker right there. I should have brought a little blending tool. Is there a napkin? I tend to make a lot of marks with pencils. So you might, if you get a, a cloth, you can blend in your marks a little bit. It makes the shading look better. So maybe you could use this image for some Halloween fun this year. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody.